connecting art, technology and finance to support social impact in climate change, health and innovation is the subject of our newest Rethink podcast episode with Roxana Churise Gedir, an artist, woman entrepreneur and financier passionate about sustainability and future-led innovations. She is the chairwoman of the Impact Advisory Board for the White Oak Global Advisor, founder of Possible X and Global Advisor to CEOs. Roxana is known for fusing art, finance and technology to challenge the status quo across several different industries. Welcome to a new episode of the Rethink Podcast for a conversation about art, technology and sustainable development and and impact investing. What do all these subjects have in common? Well, we are going to find out in today's episode with Roxana Churise Gedir, artist and founder of Possible X, once a leading European banker that today is focusing on art. Welcome, Roxana. Welcome to Rethink Podcast. Thank you so much and delighted to be here. Roxana, I will start with something that you beautifully said some time, some, some time ago. You, you will uh, let us know when this happened. But you said that through art, we can give hope and we can shift mindset. I think that your mission, this is your mission, right? I mean, Indeed, that's, that's my mission. And, and you know, I've spent uh, my professional career over 20 years in finance. Um, and, and my big passion has always been art. So I've always been creating on the side, let's say. And, uh, and I continue this journey because creativity has been really key to, to what I do. Uh, however, as you can imagine in finance, uh, not everyone gets it. And uh, I remember when I joined the board of the biggest Polish bank, uh, almost uh, because it's a relatively, it's a public company. So uh, people were a bit afraid that this artistic side might not show the serious side as well. Uh, so I really led, I would say, separate lives. But I've produced movies. I've always been fascinated uh, and, and it was really important part of my life. But what happened a few years ago, actually, I decided to step down from the board and I haven't left finance completely because I'm still uh, very interested in ESG and impact investing. So I'm currently chairing impact advisory board for uh, White Oak uh, and really how through my experience in finance, uh, I can contribute to, to really to the impact investing and ESG that everyone should be doing. Everyone in finance is, is um, focused on that. But I've decided also, and you know, it take, it's a journey. It's a life journey. It takes time. Uh, and, and really this journey of kind of becoming more authentic to myself uh, was uh, coming out, the artist in me. So, so I'm now fusing all these different worlds and all my passions uh, and really, um, you know, again, it's been a journey. It's not that I woke up with this idea, but um, I've been exploring for many years now, but now it took a shape of an impact art movement where I'm actually using my passion and creativity and also inviting other collaborations. How can we shift mindsets and also draw urgency to important issues we are facing, but not in a preaching way, not in a way of saying, guys, you know, it's too late. It's, I really want to give hope and I want this hope for myself as well. So hence yeah. that fusion. Actually, one of your exhibition, uh, your, your recent exhibition uh, caught my attention. Uh, it's about the one in COP26 COP and uh, most, uh, most recently the one for Earth Day. And maybe you can... Uh, dive us yes. into, into your uh, exhibition and what is your uh, message with this? Absolutely. Uh, so, um, so I launched the Impact Art Movement actually during COP26 and I launched it with a first sculpture. Uh, so I moved actually also developed as an artist. I started with photography. I was fusing the diamonds and technology, being artist in resonance Fabergé. But really the ultimate 3D uh, sculpture, it's, uh, it's where I moved right now. And I've done it with, uh, in collaboration with a good friend of mine, a visual artist, Kaz Galos. And uh, what we created is a actually recycled stainless steel sculpture. I wish I could show it to you now, but it's a perfect sphere. 
um, and it's got a golden crack in it. And uh, what I've become really almost obsessed, but super interested in the Japanese philosophy of Kintsugi when I discovered it. And what it is, I'm sure everyone would recognize actually once you see it. So when you have an object, let's say a plate, and you break it, uh, rather than discarding the plate, you piece it together with gold. And the object actually becomes more beautiful for having, having been broker, broken and stronger. So, so really the Aurea, because this is the name of the sculpture, is, um, is a world without borders. It's, um, I've been inspired by, you know, how an image can shift mindsets. The first time we've seen the image of Earth from space, so-called blue marble, we realize that there are no borders between countries. So actually this powerful image uh, is something that, that just one simple image, but can shift the way we, our perspectives, the way we look at things. So Aurea is uh, that insp inspired by this mind shifting uh, blue marble, and it's the world without borders, and it's a bit broken, like with Kintsugi. So it's an artistic vision of trying to repair our fractured world. It's meant to give hope. But also there is a personal, very uh, personal um, story in it, or it's also an atom. So it's us, me and you, being a bit broken, going through experiences in life. Uh, and actually these are our golden scars that we shouldn't be trying to hide them because all of us have them. So really rather um, embracing them. And, and thinking this is actually part of who we are. So, actually, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, please. No, please, please, please go, continue. Please go. But <laughs> from what I understand, you use beauty and art and technology to raise some awareness on the environmental um, um, problems Absolutely. we are facing today. Uh, and my question uh, is how can art reveal local environmental problems and sustainable de uh, development? Because mm -hmm. We, we are facing now uh, biodiversity loss, um, we are facing pollution, we are discussing more about uh, energy uh, independence and so on. How do you use art in developing more these uh, this Abs issues? Absolutely, very relevant question and something I've been uh, thinking about and, and actually uh, the evolution of my art is really the reflection of that thinking because often, you know, when faced with uh, big issues like let's say climate change, you think, what can I do as an individual except for maybe, you know, of course we can do many things, but I think people often get overwhelmed. You know, where do we start? Of course, we should consume less and, you know, not eating meat. Um, is um, some people make this choice as well, it's, uh, which um, is a big contributor. And you know, what can we do? And, and I really believe that this image of fractured world that's stronger can be this catalyst. So what I've done with this exhibition now, which is uh, ever growing. So the first one is linked to climate action. It's uh, uh, linked to sustainable development goal 13. And uh, ultimately I'm actually developing an exhibition of 17 uh, sustainable development goals, ex uh, sculptures, each one linked to a different uh, cause. And of course, we all, most people or me, I care about all the sustainable development goals. So, um, but I really thought by focusing on, on one and, and actually now going further. So you've seen the sculpture actually after Glasgow, it's currently uh, exhibited in London. Uh, which has been my dream. It's at the Inner Temple, just by River Thames. Uh, and it will be going hopefully to Davos now in May. And uh, we'll most likely go back to, uh, to London. And really the vision is to have it all over the place, all over the world. Um, the first sculpture has been actually supported by Singularity University that is very much aligned with, with that vision, which I'm very grateful for. And, and I was thinking further, okay, how in addition to shifting mindsets, what, what else can I do? And you would see that the technology has been very prominent in my art um, throughout uh, many years. And right now, I mean, I'm using technology through digital uh, augmented reality. So right now the sculpture that's in London is linked to, um, uh, planting trees <clears throat> action. So there is a QR code 
So viewers and also people who can uh, view it digitally are able to contribute to, um, to uh, actually leaving an actual impact behind. So I partnered up with Forest One and Suji that is um, that on a campaign so uh, all my friends and, and uh, not only and beyond, um, and, and I, I launched it actually during Earth Day, uh, are contributing towards a project that the sculpture is just not going to you know, have been there physically. It's also going to leave the forest behind. So, um, so that is how um, the idea of through art, mobilizing capital um, and leaving its mark came as well. You mentioned mobilizing capital and I want to make a switch now uh, to the sustainable investment because you are a, a well experienced uh, finance uh, uh, woman and you are using now your knowledge and bring all and, and bring all this uh, this awareness on, on the sustainable development goals and how can capital can be uh, moved towards uh, the, the startups that are uh, focusing on on uh, on global uh, global su sustainable development so it, it's true that sustainable investing is on the rise globally um, but what does it take to become the norm for sustainable investing it actually takes um, because obviously it is on the rise. We know this is it's unstoppable. Uh, all the banks, institutions um, are no one is in denial anymore. Uh, however, as we know, uh, it's got still many issues, and and I think that the key one is ability to measure to measure it because something we cannot measure, <laughs> it's not usually getting done. So in finance, we used to uh, look at risk adjusted returns. Uh, right now, we are looking at the triangle of risk return and impact. And now, uh, of course, there is a lot of regulation being introduced um, uh, globally, um, a lot of disclosures that company have to uh, comply with. Um, but there is still, of course, many areas that need a lot of work. So it is a process. No one is saying, you know, it's perfect, as we know, as the sculpture, perfect imperfection. The perfection doesn't exist. But I definitely uh, believe that there is the snow going back. Um, and uh, in a specific um, case where I'm chairing uh, the impact advisory board for a company, I mentioned White Oak Global Advisors, they are um, lending to small and medium sized enterprises. You can argue that in itself that's impact because you know, that's the uh, big issue. And uh, last year they launched an ESG fund. So again, they're supporting small and medium sized enterprises, but with a lens of kind of ESG. And, and for that, we spent a lot of time, that's why we created an advisory board as well, uh, to bring the latest thinking uh, that is happening, to be always at the forefront. Um, I'm working also with other companies. And again, there is no answers, exact answers, but we are all learning from each other. But really the ability to measure and the companies that are forced in a way to disclose uh, certain information um, is really the key. Yes, but it's also true that in terms of measuring uh, the, the practice is now referring to information about commitment and processes as, and rarely is focusing about the actual impact. Uh, how can we, how can you be but, more but precise you, on the impact? on the impact side. And, uh, you know, again, the problem is, uh, you know, how do you, um, uh, there are certain things we can measure, you know, the carbon footprint, and we know there are already ways, mechanisms, but there are certain, certain um, many aspects like social impact, you know, how do you measure? And you get into this huge debate and philosophical debate often as well. So clearly uh, there are certain things that can be standardized and certain that we are, finding tools so um so that that system is not perfect however i truly think that we often overcomplicate things because to me it really takes authentic leadership and also people who have the right um who are true leaders so uh we know that uh the leadership uh, you know, they say the fish smells from the head and it's it's really maybe what we are missing a bit is these uh, still in many companies the leaders 
who are actually have this authentic mission because we've seen with big corporates we've seen it is possible you know um paul Pullman and unilever you know the big uh, shift he's made so uh so i think it's really uh, a lot is the shifting mindsets, uh, mindsets and educating people. So, you know, of course, none of us want to pollute the environment, you know, but if the incentives are there, if, if the company is tempted to, you know, to pollute environment because it's very expensive, we have to also realize a lot of these measures will be expensive. So, you know, how do you pass it on to the consumer? And obviously you can't compete. So, so I think it's a very complex issue and it's very interconnected, but that's why I go back to the art as well. You know, when you have this clear vision of, okay, let's accept the world is not perfect, but you authentically want to contribute. And it's undeniable, undeniable that most people like we want to do good. We want to be better version of ourselves, you know, like people on purpose, you know, I really believe in good in people. So, so, um, so sometimes, you know, we go um, so much into detail and try to, you know, solve certain issues, but actually often is the perspective to, to zoom out and to, to really have the right people at the leadership, I believe is the key. Do you think there is any chance that uh, the impact investment to change the world, at least the business world that we know today. Look, look, I love this saying, you know, if you want to change the world, you need to start with yourself. And I'm really a huge believer uh, in this. So, um, so again, changing the world, we, so we, again, all of us, I think most people truly want to be better versions of themselves. It is though the internal journey that often is stuck, it's the beginning. So, uh, I mean, it's when I was starting my career over 20 years ago, actually at EBRD, which is European Bank for a Construction Development. Um, in a way, commercial banks, and at that time, my boyfriend was working for Goldman Sachs. And, and um, what EBRD was doing, lots of people looked down upon because they said, oh, it's not a development bank. It's stuck in between commercial bank, like it's somewhere in between. But actually, if you look what EBRD was doing back then was measuring the environmental impact and not going only after projects to maximize uh, profits. And I remember having many conversations like, why would a company wants to purely maximize profit and then maybe throw money to fix it? Like, why don't we start from the source? So, you know, I ended up working for, for the investment banks and kind of observed that so unless you have the right incentives in place, uh, in the financial world, it will be hard to, to make changes. But it really goes back to uh, us being responsible, being having that um, uh, approach. And, you know, I was brought up in a family where uh, my father and my mom, they were very conscious about the environment. We were not, uh, even though it was a socialist Poland, we, I remember we could, I don't know, use unlimited water. You pay a fixed price for the water, but we could never waste water. Like even brushing teeth, we were like, no, 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 you, you have to think of a bigger picture. So I think um, it's really important to, uh, to really bring the new generations who are, by the way, much more conscious, I believe, um, to, to really draw attention because it's our sim single people's actions do matter. And, um, and I think it really is that mind shift uh, and mindset that is the key. And also the repercussion of our actions are, are more visible. The, the impact of, of climate change is more visible. That's why, as you mentioned, the new generation is more active and requires climate action. But what are the industries that are supported now by the impact investing? So really looking, um, so specifically the, the company I am uh, working with, there is a lot of focus on energy transition. Um, and really technology, because I'm also a great believer in technology. And there are certain um, um, issues that will be solved through technology. It really is a matter of time. Uh, when I attended maybe eight years ago, a course at Singularity University, it was called Abundance 360 course. 
I remember I had this again aha moment when I because what what they do they teach you a lot about where technology is as of today and imagine that was eight years ago um, and I remember my, I was blown away just just looking across different disciplines you know where technology is because sometimes we are in our little world of let's say finance or you know and the other words are a bit separate but Again, we are only going to solve the issues if we look bigger picture, it's all interconnected. So, so to me, this moment of realization was very powerful uh, because technology is often there. It's a matter of course of spotlighting it, scaling it and making it you know, accessible. Um, I'm also you know, in my creativity working currently on a documentary with Oliver Stone actually on nuclear power, how nuclear power uh, to, to, to demystify, it could be a controversial subject to, to some, but really if you look at that, um, at this today, um, nuclear, nuclear energy is the only sustainable green energy available at scale. So, so again, it's, uh, we sometimes look at a very small, uh, all of us, you know, one, one element, but it's, it's like an interconnected, um, what do you call it? Interconnected network, or network and elements. So, so yes, it's all all so so complex. That's why there's no simple answers, um, but it takes everyone's action. It's and true progress. that we live in bubbles, but somehow when it comes to sustainability, uh, we need to uh, to to get out and to raise our our uh, our voice but and raise awareness on this definitely and you know sometimes it is education as well like for example when i realized um you know how um like huge impact uh, the meat production has got and how um, you know i shifted that was my kind of contribution i should to be a vegetarian but i'm not saying it's not Everyone, just like my fa the rest of my family, they love meat, they're carnivores. So I would not convince them. I'm not trying. I'm saying you as an individual, you have to find your way as well. Hence, I go back to this uh, internal journey as well. That is really, uh, that's where it all starts. It really starts with us. We have to do our part in this. Absolutely. We, we reached the end of our discussion, but not before I address you one last question. And that is, how do you imagine the world you would like to live in? Where there is peace and we are all living in harmony. And, um, and you know, it sounds maybe cliche, but uh, I really believe um, in love and peace. Oksana, thank you so much for, for being here with us at the Rethink Podcast. Thank you, been a pleasure to be part of it. Thank you.